And this is to give dimension to your flower. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be stitching with the satin stitch over top to make the rollover. But we have to leave room for the petal separation as well. So we're doing this on an angle. So we have the voiding showing, plus we have the area raised. In the finished product of level two, the second picture, you can see all the voiding or petal separation that is in the flower. Right here with the rollover, remember we did it in a darker color so it could be seen better. And then right along here, we have the line padding plus stitching over top and then we have the reverse stitch for the stamens. On this thistle picture I'd like to show you one of our more advanced stitches which is called feathering. I'm going to show you some of the beautiful techniques that can be used with the very fine one quarter pull. What we've done on the thistle is we've already stitched in two four pull the two base purple colors and blended them into each other. Now with a lighter shade of the lavender in one quarter pull I'm going to show you how to do the feathering stitch. With the one quarter pull when you're stitching over the two quarter pull you want to make sure that you're stitching about every third line and instead of half inch stitches you want to be stitching three eight stitches so that when we are brushing it later it does not come out. If you want your thistle to look a little bit thicker, have your one quarter pull stitches a little bit closer together before you start your feathering. Now on the next thistle we're going to continue with the process. What we're going to do is we're going to take a toothbrush and lift the one quarter pull thread. So you're just lifting it from the two-quarter pull. Okay, that's step number one. Now what you'll do is you'll take one of our feathering brushes and you'll start pulling this like this. Now if some of the threads come out, don't worry because you can always put them back in again. That's what's so beautiful about the feathering. Then step three you'll just need to clip a little bit. So it gives a nice feathering or thistly effect. Here you have the finished feathered thistle. The stem of the thistle is usually done with straight stitching with a couple of the colors that are used in the thistle. But what I'm going to do, because this is a great area to show the satin stitch, what is difficult about the satin stitch is keeping it on the same angle. What you want to do is keep it on a 70 degree angle all the way down. Now if we had line padded here it would be just a little bit smoother. But this is just to give you the idea. One of the veins in the thistle, you can, you can use so many different stitches depending on whether you want it to look thick or thin. But when you want it to have more dimension, there are several ways of doing this. So we're just doing straight stitching here. This is called split stitch because we're coming back, we're going right into the stitch and that's why it's called a split stitch. Then we're going past where we punched it in before and into the thread, past where we've punched it before, into the thread, and that's why it's called split stitch. So now you've got a delicate but raised vein. Another way of showing the veins. Let's use 2-4 cord stitch. 
which is basically a variation of the satin stitch. So you go in, go up, come back, come back to just below where you entered and back again. Okay, so it's done on lines basically, the cord stitch. So now we'll be doing the cord stitch in three-quarter pull polished. So we go in, go up, come back, just past where we went in originally, variation of the satin stitch. In this vein, we used three-quarter pull, but it wasn't polished. Look at the difference between what we just put in and what we put in earlier. Another way to do veins, so we're going to put the unpulled thread through and just bring it down to here. But you see how straight it is? What you want to do is you want to have control over this thread. So what we're going to do is use the couching stitch because you're making the thread sit down. Now those of you who have gone through the courses know that it's like a mending stitch. So it's to keep a stitch in position. So we're going to put about three or four of these in. And the closer you put them together, the more control you're going to have over the unpulled thread. So now what we're going to do is stitch in two four pull over top. So this is called the inlay stitch because you have inlaid the unpulled thread. So we're doing a satin stitch over top. And there again you get another look for a vein. So then we have the inlay stitch which is unpulled thread with couching put over it to lay it in place and then uh, you have a 2-4 pull put over top in satin stitch. When we looked at a portrait of a thistle and showed the feathering stitch, it was done with one quarter pull. Now what I'd like to do is focus on our picture called Fluttering Fancy and focus on the hummingbird to show you what a beautiful effect one quarter pull has. Right here we have another example of how delicate and the effects that can be created with one quarter pull. By perfecting the stitches that you have learned, you will be able to stitch a variety of bunko kits. Please realize that the video does not replace the expertise of a teacher. If you require information on a teacher in your area or require additional kits, supplies, or a catalog, please contact Bunker with Flair.